Good afternoon, everyone. We already find ourselves more than halfway through the summer, and I've started to notice that the sun is setting earlier in the evenings. As many of you know, my spirituality is deeply rooted in the Franciscan tradition. While I'm not formally a Franciscan, in that I don't belong to any religious community and I am under no vows, the example of St. Francis of Assisi and his way of following Christ is at the core of what I believe and embrace as a Christian. For me, it is gospel life. That is why yesterday was an important day on the church calendar, as it was the feast day of St. Clare of Assisi, the first woman to join Francis and his brothers in forging a new gospel way of life. Clare was born into the medieval feudal land-owning families of Assisi, spending some time in neighboring Perugia due to class warfare in Assisi. Several years after her return to Assisi, she determined to embark on a life of penance and spiritual commitment in her family home. However, inspired by a conversation she had with Francis in 1211, she courageously decided to abandon her family, possessions, and social status to join Francis and his brothers at their small church the Portsiuncla. Soon she was joined by several other women, members of her family too, and they settled at the church of San Damiano, which is just outside of the walls of Assisi. And Francis composed a brief form of life for her community, a rule. And Francis told them, since by divine inspiration you have made yourselves daughters and servants of the Most High King, the Heavenly Father, and have taken the Holy Spirit as your spouse, choosing to live according to the fulfillment of the Gospel, I resolve and promise for myself and for my brothers always to have the same loving care and special solicitude for you as I have for them. Claire and her poor sisters lived simply and prayerfully at San Damiano for over 40 years, supporting themselves by the work of their hands and freely offered gifts and alms. Claire, as a woman, had to fight to maintain her distinctive vision of religious life in the church at that time. After Francis's death, she was placed under a form of life composed by Cardinal Ugolin of Ostia, the future Pope Gregory IX. But she didn't want to follow that rule because it was a monastic rule. But she finally gained approval for her own rule, which was much more Franciscan, from Pope Innocent IV shortly before her death in 1253. And Claire was canonized just two years later in 1255. As Claire wrote to St. Agnes of Prague, who also joined her order, If so great and good Lord, then on coming into the Virgin's womb, chose to appear despised, needy, and poor in this world, so that people who were in utter poverty and want, suffering hunger for heavenly nourishment, might become rich in him by possessing the kingdom of heaven, then rejoice and be glad. That is a profound and deeply spiritual statement. All saints and all mystics, of which both St. Francis and St. Clair were, are positive people because they hand over all their inner negativity and fear to God. God's love was made key in their lives, and being eager to love others gave them the ability to see the love and the goodness in the world around us. 
All of the false divisions that we humans construct, racism, classism, sexism, or any temptation to divide and denigrate, is overcome in Franciscan spirituality by the insistence on the identification with the unconditional love of God on the cross, solidarity with the poor and the oppressed, and compassion with all humans suffering in general. Following the Franciscan way of life is not a search for private or moral perfection, if that were even possible, but a journey to offer loving service and concrete love to all people by respecting their inner worth and human dignity. Both St. Francis and Claire really did nothing new. They just chose to hear the gospel message and sincerely follow it. Many people listen to the gospel, but do not really hear it. Hearing the gospel means taking it to heart and letting it challenge us, make us uncomfortable, get under our skin, point out our hypocrisy, alter our worldview, and ultimately transform us. In order to overcome the divisions and mistrust in this world, as Christians, we must allow the grace of the Holy Spirit to break down our own inner structures of sin, the fears and the anxieties that keep us from loving freely and offering our gifts, gifts that we are given by the Holy Spirit, to a broken and hurting world. Both Francis and Claire were free. They were free people, free by the grace of God and the example of Christ to love as we were made to love, without judgment or condemnation or privilege. It is the gospel way, and I pray that I may always embrace it. I would like to invite you to pray with me now as we remember the example of St. Clair and her humility in following Christ without possessions and power, trusting in the providence of God to guide us and provide for us. We will be using the noonday service from the prayer book, and I hope this video gets up as close to noon as possible. Um, it begins on page 103, and I am substituting the scripture reading as I always do, and we will be using Psalms 12 and 41, found on pages 597 and 641 of the prayer book. And so we will take just a few moments to be silent and to focus and to make ourselves present before God. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Psalm 12 Help me, Lord, for there is no godly one left. The faithful have vanished from among us. Everyone speaks falsely with his neighbor. With a smooth tongue they speak from a double heart. Oh, that the Lord would cut off all smooth tongues and close the lips that utter proud boasts. Those who say, 
With our tongue we will prevail. Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? Because the needy are oppressed and the poor cry out in misery, I will rise up, says the Lord, and give them their help they long for. The words of the Lord are pure words, like silver refined from ore and purified seven times in the fire. O Lord, watch over us and save us from this generation forever. The wicked prowl on every side. That which is worthless is highly prized by everyone. Psalm 41. Happy are they who consider the poor and the needy. The Lord will deliver them in the time of trouble. The Lord preserves them and keeps them alive, so that they may be happy in the land. He does not hand them over to the will of their enemies. The Lord sustains them on their sickbed and ministers to them in their illness. I said, Lord, be merciful to me. Heal me, for I have sinned against you. My enemies are saying wicked things about me. When will he die and his name perish? Even if they come to see me, they speak empty words. Their hearts collect false rumors. They go outside and spread them. All my enemies whisper together about me and devise evil against me. A deadly thing, they say, has fastened on him. He has taken to his bed and will never get up again. Even my best friend, whom I trusted, who broke bread with me, has lifted up his heel and turned against me. But you, O Lord, be merciful to me and raise me up, and I shall repay them. By this I know that you are pleased with me, that my enemies does not triumph over me. In my integrity you hold me fast and shall set me before your face forever. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel from age to age. Amen. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. A reading from the Gospel of Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens. They neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouses nor barns, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your lifespan? If then you are not able to do so, small a thing as that, why do you worry about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not keep striving for what you are to eat and what you are to drink, and do not keep worrying, for it is the nations of the world that strive after all these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, strive for the kingdom of God, and these things will be given to you as well. Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom, Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourself that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, your heart will be there also. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son became poor, that we through his poverty might be rich, deliver us from an inordinate love of wealth and power, that we, inspired by the humble devotion of your servant Claire, may serve you with singleness of heart and attain to the riches of the kingdom of God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you now to offer your own intercessions and prayers, and to take a few moments to cast all of your fears and uncertainties at the foot of the cross. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I ask God's blessing upon you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.